Hi, it's Bridget. Today I want to share with you a very personal psychic story. The date that I'm recording this video is a very special day for me. Today is my psychic birthday, and I want to share with you the story of how that came to be. It was back in 2004 when all this began, when I became aware of the fact that I was not just kind of intuitive, but that I was very psychic. So <clears throat> how it goes is my mom was getting ready to sell our childhood home. It was a house that we've lived in for many, many years. It was two years after my dad had passed away and she was packing up things. And I got a frantic call from her just a, a few weeks, uh, about a week or so prior to this date. And she was very upset because when she was packing up all her things, there was one thing she could not pack up and move with her onto her new place to start her new, new part of her life. And that was dad's urn. Now my dad's urn was this big box. It was just this simple oak box and it was heavy. You know what it reminds me of? <laughs> Those old silverware boxes. And it had sat there in the dining room, actually in the bureau for about two years. And I, being the oldest of three, it's kind of my responsibility to take care of things. So I stepped into action and I made arrangements to have my dad's ashes buried up north, way up in northern Minnesota in a small little farming community. And that farming community is very special to my family because my great grandparents were born and raised there. And my dad's parents, my dad's mother was also born and raised there. And so I remember as just a really little, little kid going up north and visiting this small little town with this cool old church. And it just so happens that in my grandma and grandpa's, my great grandma and grandpa's house, they had, and when they sold the farm, they moved into town, as they often do, you know, and behind there was a little alley, and then right behind that was this old cemetery, and it didn't have a fence around it or anything. It was just very green, and just, it was beautiful, huge trees, and just, it seemed so special to me, and growing up, I remember, I remember the cemetery. In fact, my, my great-grandpa was the caretaker, and so... I actually used to, when we went up north, I was so excited to go and play in the cemetery. To me, it was just like this beautiful park, this peaceful place. And I used to call the uh, markers, the, the gravestones, my, my great grandpa's trophies. I'm like, nobody thought that was weird as a child that I liked that. But it was just this thing, right? So that cemetery, my childhood play, play place, I guess is where my dad is uh, buried, his ashes are buried. And so how this happened was then, so it was two years after my dad passed away and it was a girls weekend. <clears throat> I was going up north and I had a girlfriend with me in, in the minivan and we just took a detour, we took an extra hour to go to the cemetery and I literally met a guy in an old rusted out Ford pickup truck with a shovel in the back. And he was the grave digger. And I thought kind of that would all be done before I got there, but it kind of wasn't. And so we got there and uh, the, it was cool. The weather was very cool in Minnesota. It, it, it's beautiful in the autumn here. And it was kind of chilly. And he, we waited, my friend and I, while he dug up the earth. And I literally set the box, this heavy box, I leaned in and set this box into the earth and I could feel, I'll never forget the feeling, and it wasn't creepy at all, of the earth on just on the side of my arm on my shoulder because it was deeper than I thought and I kind of caught myself, you know? <laughs> I thought, oh, um, deep into the earth and I set the box in and then the old guy with the shovel started putting the dirt back and... I just stood there for a bit. We had stopped to buy flowers and I stood there and read some of the markers of some of my, my family. Um, and 
it was just peaceful. And then it started to kind of rain, but it was a rain that was like a little bit of a freezing. It was really chilly, like little pellets. It wasn't raining hard, just little bits. And I, enough, <clears throat> enough that it had some weight to it. I could feel it. I remember that, that feeling of the rain on my, my cheeks and stood there for a bit. My fingers started to kind of shake a little and my friend nudged me and she said, pick up some rocks. I thought, what? What do you mean pick up some rocks? In the earth, the mound that was being put back into its place, there were some big chunks of rocks, big rocks, different sizes. And I thought, oh, oh okay. And so I picked some up. And those rocks rolled around in my minivan for about a month before I actually took them out. And I put them into this beautiful ceramic bowl that my brother had actually made in high school, one of those ceramics classes. And I still have it. In fact, it's in my bathroom, just right next to the tub, this beautiful bowl with all these rocks from that day in it. Just captures the energy. Maybe that's when I started to like rocks. I don't know. Might be. So then after that, I was really kind of just... Uh, almost numb. It was just kind of like another to do on my list. I never really felt overly emotional. It had been two years after all since my dad died. I was very close to my dad, by the way. I was very, very close to my dad. And <clears throat> so then my friend and I, we continued on our journey and back to the cabin. Um, we arrived there and it was a full house. There were many, many ladies there already. There's probably 12 of us, 13 of us total. And I went up to the loft where our, um, my bed was and put my stuff down. And I started to not, I, I just, I didn't quite feel right. I felt almost disconnected and a little bit numb. Again, I didn't feel really emotional. I think my friend expected me to be just crying and really emotional. And I just, I didn't really feel anything. I didn't feel, I felt almost like I was in a, a no space, no time space or something. It, it, was, it was like on a pause almost. It, it was different. I wasn't afraid or anything. Or I just kind of thought maybe I'm not feeling well, you know. So I went downstairs to this big, huge table where everybody plays cards and stuff. And there were some ladies sitting and I sat down next to someone and I kind of leaned over to her. <clears throat> and I said, and I, I had met her before. So like I knew her name, I think, but that was pretty much it. She'd been on one of the other weekends. And I said, I, I described to her this woman with this beautiful, it was almost a, a deep blue or almost purple, deep, deep color, rich color shawl wrapped around her. And she was this older woman and she smelled really good. And I saw her earrings and I could describe her. And I leaned over and I told this, this woman, I told her that I, I don't know, how do I explain this? I taught... It, it turned out that her grandmother had died a couple of weeks prior and she was close to her grandma and I was seeing her grandma and I just described to her th that I said, excuse me, you know, and I just said, <laughs> I described this woman and I talked to her about her and what she was like and I, 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 it's hard to recall it because it was kind of, I was just in the zone, you know. I was just in this zone and it was just, it just flowed. And I saw, I clearly saw this woman and she was very kind, very sweet spirited. And then this, this girl, this lady that I was talking to, she just started crying and it was this whole thing. And, and she said, I didn't know you were psychic. And I said, I didn't know I was psychic either. You know, <laughs> my friend who did the retreat or did the coordinated the girls began said, I didn't know you were psychic. I said, I didn't know either, <laughs> you know. And then pretty soon as the, the time went on, I, I just connected to more. I, I could feel more spirit and I was having these conversations with other ladies and other spirits. And then eventually I just had to, I, I just had to stop, you know. I just, I didn't feel well. I started to get a headache and I kind of thought maybe I had the flu or something because I kind of got a headache and I kind of had that hot, warm, icky feeling, you know, when you think you're coming down with something. And so I went upstairs and I laid down for a while. And <laughs> the next morning, my friend who coordinated the retreat, we went on a walk 
and it was so chilly. It was perfect weather, not raining anymore, but it was just perfect weather in Minnesota. And we were walking because she and I had made plans to do the breast cancer three-day walk later that year. And so we are the following year. And so we needed to fundraise. So we were going to go on this walk and kind of process, talk about, okay, what can we do to fundraise for this three day? Because it was really expensive. It was a little over $2,000 at that time. That was like 14 years ago, you guys. And so that was a lot of money then. And we were walking and we were talking and she said, (laughs) trying to process fundraising ideas. She said, Bridget, you should do psychic work. You should do readings for people, you know? And I said, hmm, I, I kind of thought about it and I thought, I said, hey, that would be a great way to raise money, right? So that's how my psychic work or my business started. I did groups. I would go and do groups and I would do it for fundraising. And it wasn't very long, literally maybe not even five months, and I had all the money for the fundraising that I needed for the breast cancer 3D. I had it in like five months, and that was pretty fast. And I loved doing groups and I was focused on mediumship. That's what, how I started. And then after that, I, I had a business, you know, it was a hobby business. I didn't do it all the time, but I started doing private sessions and mediumship and that's how I started. And I really believe that the reason why I, I opened up that way or I was willing to open up that way was because of my dad. I had, I had a resource on the other side. I had an in in the afterlife. And it was because of my dad. And I trusted my dad. So when I would do sessions, and and really, believe you me, I've had a lot of dads from the afterlife, especially in the beginning coming through. Um, My dad would kind of be my protector. And I knew that when I had dad there, it was I was safe. Everything was fine. I wasn't scared. I didn't think it was creepy or anything like that. It was just so natural for me. It was no big deal for me. And of course, I had to learn very early on how to manage energy. That's why I got a headache and didn't feel well, because you really have to manage your energy and understand how energy works. And, And over time, I've gotten, I think, pretty good at that. It's a necessity. It's just a part that you need to have in order to do this kind of work especially when you're constantly doing mediumship, and that's how it started. And then I moved into um, doing coaching and mentoring for people who are psychic and, and then talking to all sorts of spirit guides, angels, deities, god, goddess aspects, totems, um, shamanism. I've had some experience in that area. And mostly, though, I like the angels, the archangels. That was kind of my I don't want to say my favorite, but that's the that's my go to. That's what I I connect with, who I connect with, energies I connect with a lot in session because I think a lot of people can identify and relate to that. So so the angels came early, early on. And I bet you're probably wondering, well, so when did you talk to your dad? Well, I talked to my dad ever since he died. I talked to him all the time. I talked to him in my kitchen and I shared messages to Um, with my brother and sister for my dad and it was just normal and it was just natural and I had been doing that all along like since he passed away in 2002 and so I just always did that I kind of thought that everybody just did that once you had someone who was on the other side or in heaven whatever your belief system is I I just thought it was natural. You just connect with them. Why wouldn't you You connect with them in life? Why wouldn't you connect with them in your spirit? Especially since you're connected by love. Love is that channel. Love is that, that, that phone line, you know, that cable that connects, right? So you can communicate. And then looking back now, <laughs> over time, I, <clears throat> I realize how, par- how these parts of me have integrated. And in fact, so during that time, I was also at my job, I had gotten a promotion and moved into organizational development and learning. So I did training and such. And so I had the opportunity, um, I kind of took the initiative and asked to become a certified life coach. And so I did also around that time. It was, I think it was 2005 when I did that. And so I became a certified life coach. So I, 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 it was a natural integration from my psychic work, from mediumship and from coaching to just put that all together. And I use all of those skills. I'm such a, I have such a passion for empowering and inspiring people and your spirit to connect with your spirit and access this incredible resource that we all have. And so it's just a natural integration for me. And as I look back, 
I, I can see how the, all these pieces fit, you know, and I, <laughs> in fact, it's kind of interesting. So when I first got psychic, I was first aware of my psychic gifts, all these other stories started coming forward. So my mom shared that um, when I was little, not just playing in the cemetery thing, but my mom shared that when I was little, um, they used to tell people, she would tell people that I had a photographic memory. Like this is really little like when I was four because I would be able, I was so clairvoyant. I have always been so clairvoyant and clairvoyance is the psychic gift of sight. Like I see, I see everything. I see spirit, I see everything. And I see energy too, which is probably why I am interested in clearing work and I, I do that often and, and healing work as well energetically because I, it's just, I see that's just my, that's my jam, you know? And my mom would tell people that I was clairvoyant or I was, um, that I had a photographic memory because I could describe in detail where things were sitting on their tables or in their living rooms and the coffee table or how the pictures were aligned on their, you know, um, entertainment center and that kind of a thing. And I, and, and I'm like, but mom, I've never even been in their house, you know? And so there's some stories like that, but there's also, um, and then there's stories where um, uh, growing up, so like um, I had a lot of paranormal experiences as a preteen and a teenager, which is common for people who are psychic, who are very psychic people. And maybe you experience that, or maybe you have children that experience that, but lots of paranormal activity. So in my bedroom, um, things would fly around sometimes. Um, I'd have some, it depends on what spirits were around. Um, some creepy stuff did happen. I was really scared, um, probably like early teen, preteen, early teen. Lots of stuff happened. Um, stuff got moved around. That stuff wasn't that creepy. But when things actually flew around, um, back in the day, McDonald's used to have in their Happy Meals, they had these little cars. They were zooming cars. You pulled them back and they just raced. I had them lined up on my dresser and they're called, I think they were called um, Fast Max or something. And you pull them back and they zoom. Well, I had those on my dresser and I had some pencils like in a pencil thing on my dresser. And one night, I could always feel, un I would feel unsettled. It was hard to sleep. I went through some periods of time where the house felt like it was haunted and it clearly was. There was other paranormal activity that affected other people in the home growing up too. And so I, and it wasn't an old house. No, that's a myth, you guys. It's not just old houses that have spirits. It's when there are spiritually connected people in the house, psychic people in the house that you can have that, just so you know. It's not just old houses. It's also people that attract that energy. And so, and that's what happened with us, I believe. And so one night, I mean, I was really unsettled and I could feel it. I just felt uncomfortable. I couldn't get to sleep and it was tough. I slept with the lights on. My sister didn't really appreciate that. We shared a room. I slept with the lights on. I would get my little brother to come and sleep on the floor next to me so that I wasn't alone and stuff. And one night we were playing cards, trying to fall asleep with the lights on crazy. And all of a sudden, the cards went all over. And then those little fast max zinged back and zoom and hit the flew across the thing and hit the closet door. And then the pencils started flying. And then all of a sudden it was done. I was like, Oh, my gosh, you know, we just huddled together and it was done. So I had some experiences like that growing up. And then in adulthood, I would, um, I remember visiting a college. And it was an old, cool, old Catholic college. And I was walking down one of the stairs after one of the meetings uh, about the, you know, the studies and the offerings there. And it's a big old staircase and then the cool, you know, the mule posts were so cool and just beautiful wood. And I moved and said, excuse me, to walk around a nun that was coming up the stairs. Well, I had a friend with me and she said, what are you doing? She thought I was crazy. I said, well, and then I realized she didn't see her. I said, you didn't see that? She said, no. And I'm like, oh, I've kind of been doing that my whole life, stepping around spirits. <laughs> no, seriously, it's the truth. It's just the way it's been. And that was, I think that might have been before I even knew that I was psychic. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> and yeah, it was. And so that's, 
so I have some other experiences like that as well. And so you just connect the dots, you know? I just thought, I honestly just thought that I had a great imagination. I was always a really good writer and I had these great, um, I just thought it was creative, you know, growing up. I thought I was just a creative type, you know? I thought I had a good imagination. I thought everybody had that. I thought everybody, I thought it was normal. Like it wasn't a big deal to me. I never tried to hide you know, my intuition or anything like that. It was only in adulthood when I actually recognized that I was, what I was doing, what I was able to do and how I could connect was called psychic and medium. The whole word psychic scares people away or it did at that time. You know, this was like 14 years ago. And so I was like, ooh, I'm a professional and I have a family and I don't know how to just say I'm psychic. And so then I became, I kind of went on a mission for myself to embrace who I am and whatever terms that means, that psychic and medium. And so I proudly use the term psychic because I want it to be just normal. Like I am a soccer mom. I am uh, educated. I mean, I went to college. I have a couple of degrees. I had a very professional career. I am someone you would bump into in the line at the, the grocery store and say, oh, excuse me, or, you know, I might hold the door open for you because you have more bags than I do. I mean, you would not, like, you can't, I'm not like some crazy person that, you know, looks like there's no look to a psychic person, you know, and it's natural. It's so natural. For me, it's like breathing. It's not separate from me. It's part of who I am. And I intend to love all parts of myself and embrace all of the gifts that I, I've been given the awareness of in this lifetime. And so I think by doing that, it empowers other people, especially women, to recognize the power that you have and the gifts that you have. And it's important for us all to have that kind of a, a connection with ourselves and really love and accept ourselves as well. And today I'm celebrating myself and all parts of me. I am so grateful. I have met so many incredible people and my journey continues to unfold and I'm excited about what the future holds and there's always something new. So I have, I have had experience in all different kinds of psychic areas and I'm sure that more will come forward. And right now I'm doing a lot of channeling work and I'm talking to a lot of um, afterlife, afterlife spirits, but I also channel you, your spirit, your intuition. So I do both. But the channeling is just perfect. It's just who it's it fits me. It's who I am. You know, it's like, it's natural. It's just like talking to you right now. So, so that's my psychic story. Today is my psychic birthday and you better bet that I'm going to celebrate it. I want to say thank you to all the people who supported me along the way and the people who now as I break into new areas are kind of um, people that don't really know me yet might not understand the backstory. And I think it's important for you to do that, to see me as a person and understand the story uh, behind the person. And even the people that are starting to challenge me now, because there are people that aren't so nice, like with some of their comments and things on some of my, my YouTube channels and stuff. And it surprises me. It just kind of surprises me, I guess. But that's an area that I, I continue to grow in as well. You know, it just, it just, pushes me more into loving myself. And really, I just believe so much in, in who I am. And I look forward to continued opportunities in the future to grow, to continue to grow and develop. So now with my transformative channeling and um, channeling afterlife celebrities, that's really fun. And doing my retreats, uh, it's just, it's wonderful. I look forward to what the future holds. So thank you for being part of the journey. I have a lot of gratitude. Thank you.